Well, hey there, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here. Thanks for stopping by and watching my video today. Sorry it's been a few weeks since the last video. I've been out west shooting all kinds of wildlife. It's having a blast with bears and elk and pronghorn and prairie dogs and bison, you name it. I've had my glass pointing its direction and probably see some of that stuff in upcoming videos. But anyhow, this time around, I want to share a secret with you. Well, I guess it's not really a big secret, and if we're being totally honest with each other, it's actually a technique that I pretty much cobbled together from photographers that are much smarter about this stuff than I am. So what's the big secret? It's my web resize and sharpening technique. Now to the uninitiated, this may seem like a pretty basic technique. Most people think you just resize, maybe do a quick pass with a sharpening tool and stick it out on the web, right? Yeah, that's what I used to think too, until a few years ago when I started noticing that other photographers seemed to have much more detail, they had more depth, their pictures looked more realistic, and they did it without any over sharpening. Turns out there's actually quite a process to really getting a good looking web image, and I'm going to share the one that I use with you in this video. Also, Yes, I know there are about as many ways to resize and sharpen for the web as there are photographers out there, and this way certainly isn't the only way. This is just a technique I currently use and have been using for the last several years. Also, I'm not sure who originally came up with this style slash method. I've actually seen about a dozen really good photographers that all use a technique that is very similar to this, so I just modified it to fit my needs, and I'm hoping that you like it too. Oh, and since this has actually a lot of steps, I put the entire thing into a set of actions you can download and install into Photoshop so you don't actually have to memorize any of what I'm about to show you. And we'll get to that at the end of the video. Okay, but first, in all seriousness, I do want to show you the technique. So if you need to resize to some size that's not in my Photoshop actions that you download, you can do it manually. So let's turn to Photoshop right now and we'll take a look. All right, here is our image in Photoshop. It's a pretty big image, actually. It's taken with a 24 megapixel camera, but I want it to just be 800 pixels across, which is a really nice web size. So before we do any of that, though, I have a couple of preliminaries I like to do. The first thing is to go to Image, Mode, and in this case, it's 16 bits a channel. I want to drop it to 8 since pretty much 99% of the monitors out there are only going to display 8 bits anyway. So let's drop that to 8. Uh, the next step is we want to make sure that the colors are going to look right and look the same more or less on as many monitors as possible. So we need to make sure that the profile, the color profile, is sRGB. And we're going to go to the Edit menu, Convert to Profile. I'm going to click this. And I can see right now my profile is currently Adobe RGB. But what I want to do is put it into this sRGB color space. What this is going to do, most browsers, uh, most modern browsers anyway, uh, will more or less properly display the image in the colors you intended if you're an sRGB. Nothing's perfect, but this is as close as you can get. If you don't do this and just leave it in Adobe RGB, you're going to have people uh, on other computers looking at it and the colors are going to just look way, way off from what uh, you would expect them to be seeing. So make sure you switch it to sRGB. All right, now that those two things are done, we can actually go ahead and uh, do some work with uh, changing the size of this image. Now, we're going to do this in a couple of step process. We're not going to just take it straight down to 800. What we're going to do is we're going to take it about uh, two thirds larger than that. Um, what we want to do is go to Image, Image Size, and you're going to get this dialog box. This is uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud. Um, and you want to make sure this little lock is pressed. If you're using an older version of Photoshop, make sure you check the Constrained Proportions box. And what we're going to do is we need to enter a width here. Again, I don't want to go down to 800. What I'm going to do is I'm going to launch my little calculator app here and do a little math. Um, basically, we want to take our final resolution, which is 800, and we want to multiply that by 1.67, basically two-thirds larger. And we hit Equal. It's 1336. If you happen to get a decimal here, just round up. So we're going to take 1336 and we're going to sharpen with this uh, with this resolution here. So let's put that in there. Uh, 1336. And as you can see, when I did that, this changed too. Uh, resolution, you can leave it. It's not that it really doesn't make much of a difference. Some people like to set it to 72. It doesn't really matter. It, we're going for 800 pixels across. It doesn't matter what the uh, resolution happens to be. Uh, you're going to want to resample, and I like bicubic 
just standard, the, the, the one that says smooth gradients. I don't want the reduction, I don't want the enlargement, I want this one right here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And as you can see, it shrunk the, the image down here. Let's put it to 100%. Now we're going to start to do some sharpening. So the first thing is we go to Filter and we go to the Sharpen uh, menu here. And I'm not going to use Unsharp Mask. A lot of people, some people use it. Honestly, the Sharpen method here works really, really good for this particular uh, uh, sharpening uh, technique that I use. You could use Unsharp Mask, but I found that it's not as consistent when I'm using it with a lot of different photos, so I use Sharpen. So I'm going to hit it once. And now what I want to do is I want to take the background layer here and I'm going to duplicate it. Just go right here and you see this little thing, this little uh, new layer icon down here. And you see I have one called Background Copy. I'm going to actually double click that and I'm going to change the name to Sharp-ADG for Sharpen Adjustment. Um, and now I'm going to sharpen this layer again. And again, Filter, Sharpen. And again, just, use, just select the one that says Sharpen. And now it's looking a little bit overly sharp. Now before I do the next step, I'm going to go ahead and add a layer mask to this. And now I'm going to bring it down to the actual size that we want. So image, image size, and let's put this down to the actual size, which is 800. Hit OK. And probably in the video it's tough to see, but now it really, really looks pretty decent. Normally I find that doing this method over sharpens it just a tad. So I then take the opacity and I drop it to about 70% right here. And in my actions that you're going to get, it's actually already preset like that. But you can obviously go in, if you don't think there's enough sharpening, you can adjust it. If you think there's too much, you can bring it down a little bit more. Now this is, that's the basic sharpening technique there, but I also want to do uh, a couple of uh, uh, adjustment layers here. So I'm going to start with a uh, levels adjustment layer right here. And we are going to take and set this middle value to 0.97. What that's going to do is darken the image up just a little bit. I'm going to turn that layer on and off and you can see when it's on it darkens it just a bit. The sharpening adds a little bit of brightness to it so by doing this, the sharpening and the reduction, you can kind of counteract that and bring the image back down to where it should be. The other problem when you sharpen is, especially when you sharpen and reduce like this, is sometimes you lose a little bit of color. So I also like to add a hue saturation um, adjustment layer. And this one is usually set around 8 or so, so I'm just going to go ahead and put 8 in there. And it's a very, very subtle difference. In fact, I doubt you can see it on the video, but when you are looking at this, on your computer, you'll definitely, if you look real close, you can see a difference. It just gives it just a little bit of a bump. And uh, that's basically it. From here, I would just save this as a JPEG and upload it to whatever website I wanted. Okay, that's it. Now, how about those actions I promised you? Here's a link to the actions, and I'll also put a link in the description area of this video on YouTube for you. Uh, so let's take a look at installing the actions and briefly how to use them next. Okay, I want to show you how to load these actions into Photoshop in case you don't know. Um, there's a lot of tutorials, a lot of people out there can tell you this. It's really, really simple though. First you're going to need to download them and I gave you that link uh, before and I'm putting it on the screen again right here so that you have it. Uh, make sure you download that. It's in a zip file. Unzip it and then put it in the location of your choice. It's a, it's, it'll say Steve Perry Web Sharpening and .atn and just put that any place where you like to keep your actions. As a matter of fact, personally I have a folder in my document called actions and I just keep it in there just so that it, all my actions are in there and I know where to find them. So that's the first step. I'm assuming that you've gotten to that point. If not, pause the video, download it, and do it. And uh, let me show you how to load it into Photoshop next. So we're in Photoshop here and basically what we're going to do is load our actions. You hit the little menu button here and uh, if you don't see this actions palette by the way, just real quick, go to Window and make sure you click Actions because not everybody has this up. Um, but go to your Actions palette and then just go to this little menu icon right up here in the corner and uh, load Actions. And go to where you have the Sharpen Action there and there's Steve Perry's Sharpen Action there, Open. And here you go. And as you can see we have a bunch of different ones loaded up here, a bunch of different options for you. Uh, basically these are sizes. H is horizontal, V is vertical. This is the longest measurement. So on a horizontal image this is the top, you know, left to right, and on a vertical this is top to bottom right here. So 
right now I have a vertical image. Let's, let me just go through this real quick. It's exactly like what you just saw. Uh, let's just do one here at uh, 1000. I'm going to hit play and you can see all the steps are in here. And I'm just going to go down here, hit play, and it's going to run through it. We'll bring this up to 100%. Just like that, it's done. And you can see everything that's uh, in here, and you can go through and adjust it just like we had discussed before. We have the levels uh, adjustment layer, the hue and saturation adjustment layer, the sharpen adjustment layer. And I do like to put a mask in here, and the reason for that is sometimes I don't want to sharpen everything in the photo. Uh, for instance, in this photo, I don't necessarily maybe want to sharpen all the sky here. So I could just uh, go to a brush tool and I can make sure black is selected as my foreground color. I can click on the layer mask and I can just paint that layer mask in with some black. Now this is obviously not a very good um, job I'm doing here. I would normally take my time on this, but just to give you an example, but you can see, you know, I just kind of covered that area up so that I'm not sharpening background and I'm not sharpening just noise out there. I only, you know, I can apply this just as I want. A lot of people don't bother with this step. Uh, I think it's handy, especially if you're trying to put really nice stuff out there. But anyhow, that's how you use the actions. Very simple. Again, that if you're using vertical, this is the long side on the vertical and horizontal, this is the long side on the horizontal. I selected some sizes that I find get used very commonly out on the web and are required. So. Yeah, obviously, if uh, these work for you, that's great. If not, you can make your, uh, some of your own using the technique I showed you. All right, that's about it. Again, this is my current sharpening method, and who knows, down the road it may change. For now, I really like it, and I hope it's something that uh, you find useful as well. And I want to thank you so much for watching today, and if you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to hit that little like button below if you're watching this on YouTube. Also, please subscribe to my channel and head to my site and sign up for my email newsletter. If you do, I promise to let you know whenever I release these videos and who knows, maybe even some more cool actions. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.